What is up, YouTube? I uh, it's been about tomorrow will be a week that I received the Sony SW2 Smartwatch 2. I've used it or I wore it to work for probably oh about three or four of those days. The day was really cold. I wore multiple layers of clothes and I didn't wear it because it was uncomfortable but uh, I think I've used it long enough for its intended purpose that I feel comfortable enough to uh, give an honest outlook on it anyway when the watch arrived it was in the box I did an unboxing this I'm going to use a little phone to help hold it up this was the band that came on it. I don't know if you can tell by my hands in the video, but my wrists are pretty big. And it would fit, but it was tight. It was constricting. So I went and bought a new band. I like the metal clasp bands better. Because after a period of time, the material ones they tend to uh, break it out, break me out. And uh, while this one fits, I had to use the extension bars from it, the original band to fit this. Because when they say that. most or all watch bands will fit they're not taking an account of it this is actually probably maybe a centimeter wider between that distance than normal watches and the bars that came with this band were not even close to touching when I first put this on it uh it looked funny <laughs> because I was first seen it with these and it flares out up by the watch and it doesn't make it look as big but since you don't have that flare out anymore it tends to look a little funny but uh, since I've had like that for a couple of days I've gotten used to it uh, next thing well let's finish the thought the question I have Sony is uh, you do realize a lot of your niche market are bigger people. I mean, yes, you do have the skinny ones and this and that, but a good majority are going to have more than a 18 to 20 uh, millimeter or centimeter uh, wrist size. This is, uh, I want to say, a 22 is what I'm using. And it's on the expand setting. There might be a 24. And as you can see, a notification just came in. Now when you tap on it, it brings it up so you can read it. Now, I don't know what Sony was thinking. Now you'd think right here you'd be able to tap it and enlarge it. Well, it doesn't. There's no pinch to zoom. You can just scroll. Now... The next question I have for Sony is uh, why is there a notification shade? I can't scroll through it and I can't dismiss them. It just takes me into the application and then you gotta scroll through this way to actually clear out the notification. Uh, and there's two, there's the app that shows up and then there's your total messages. Why didn't we just have a total unified? I mean, obviously I'm not using a Sony phone. That might be why. But uh, I was just curious with that. The next thing, uh, these buttons are capacitive obviously. Uh, the menu button doesn't do much. You can either have it sort by favorite apps would be most used or A to Z. Uh, it's 
it's a nice clean layout. I know they're trying to be different, but my question is, they focus on it so heavily, make it look like Android, but yet it's such a stripped down copy of Android that it just continually runs an app tray, I guess you would say. And the home doesn't even bring back the watch. You gotta hit the power button and it times out. And these buttons don't do nothing until you turn the power button. See, it lights up, then you hit the home, and then it brings you to this. I know it sounds like I'm nitpicking at this point, but the one thing I was curious about was some of the applications too. Uh, I know that it's still an infant market, it's still niche. I really think, unless they get a little more functionality out of them, it's going to be lost. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I've noticed my first speculation when I paired this to my phone was how bad is this going to be on the battery life? And to be honest, it's actually helped the battery life because instead of me unlocking the phone, checking the notification, the phone doesn't even get the notification anymore. It just sends it straight to the watch as you've seen. And that's kind of cool, but you can't reply from it, which I don't expect it to. For all the more I paid for it, it it does an amazing, it does what it's intended to do. It's it's a, basically a, a, a more smaller uh, PDA maybe. Uh, Next thing, I was at a customer's house, he was asking me about it. The dollar. Now, who is going to dial that on their watch? There's, from best I can tell, there's no internal microphone or speaker. I've not done this yet, as far as I can tell, that it sends it to the phone through speakerphone, I imagine. Now the contacts assorts it, but when you do get a call, it does show up, but you can accept through it. I think the intent of this is, if you have a Bluetooth uh, stereo in your car and you get your phone paired, and uh, instead of having to grab the remote or reach to push the button on the stereo itself, it's more likely to be aftermarket unless you have a new vehicle. Instead of Going through all that, you can just reach over, tap accept on your hand on your wrist. Now, that's that's an application that's just there to say that it can do it. And I I know the Galaxy Gear costs a lot more money, but it actually has a built-in microphone and speaker. Uh wasn't really looking for that kind of functionality to begin with. Uh, I just find it interesting that they felt the need to add that. I think they're just trying to compete with other manufacturers, which there's not very many out there right now. And I, I guess the point I'm getting at is this is a little more fancy of a pebble. I'm not saying that the pebble isn't an amazing device. I I weighed the price of a pebble versus this and I, this one out because it was the cheaper option. Uh, I think this has potential. But I don't know if Sony will uh, elaborate on it. I'm not entirely sure how well this sold. I know I haven't seen very many of the more popular reviewers look at this to look at this watch. It's it's been about either the Pebble or the Galaxy Gear. Uh, so the outside light performance of the screen is amazing. 
it does a fantastic job and I'm really happy with that I mean for for, for the main intent of why I bought it and what it does it does it well I mean it it's, it's definitely does a watch hands down the question the thing I thought because normally I was used to pushing this for the menu and the Android and it doesn't do it you actually have to go to the notification I didn't realize at first but there are some watch faces built in that's the one I'm, that's the one I'm currently running the black Here's just some other ones. Basically select it, push the home, and there you go. Now, the interesting ones are the add-on watch phases. Some of them, they don't work quite the way they're supposed to. See, when it first times out, it goes to that watch. And then eventually it'll go to the watch, the new watch face you selected. Or once you have it enabled, you have to basically uninstall it from the phone in order to use the default watch face. Uh, again, that's just me looking for stuff to complain about. But other than that, it's doing a fantastic job. Uh, not really had too many people ask a whole lot about it. I still think it's one of those geeky things, uh, which is fine by me, whatever. Uh, it's been interesting the past week because I haven't worn a watch in years. The last watch I actually wore was a Casio Wave Scepter. And uh, that's where I found and, and liked the steel bands because I had the steel class band. Uh, I really think that's for now as far as these are concerned they're not really quite ready for mass mass uh, market the the whole base of the watch it's probably another five years or ten years before if they still keep working with this kind of wearable technology you're looking at another five, ten years before it catches on. Uh, and by that time, you're going to see watches that will stand alone. At least I would I would hope so. When I mean stand alone, I mean pop a SIM card in it and uh, not have to take your phone. But for that to happen, I mean some people, I mean they're going to like the idea of just having to take that and not have to carry their phone. Other people, if they're going to do that, they're going to. That's what's going to start the bigger screens for the watches, and then you're going to start seeing basically the whole gauntlet thing, kind of like from like Futurama, like Lila wears. That's what you'll eventually see if it catches on. Uh, but again, that would be such a niche market base that that wouldn't be for another at least 20, 30 years probably. I mean, I very well could be wrong. I could be coming within the next five, ten years. But uh, the Galaxy Gear, I'll give it credit. A lot of what it does, it does from what I've seen well. I don't know anyone personally that has one. But from what videos I've seen of people using them outside of the commercial Samsung is pushing. I really think Samsung is going to be the one that's going to bring the mass appeal to the market, but I think it's going to take another company to actually bring unification to the market. Because right now, the Galaxy Gear only works with Samsung phones. 
and unless it has at least Android 4.2 or no 4.3 it won't work. That's why when it launched it only worked with the Note 3 because it had the latest latest software. But then again it, ha it works on Bluetooth 4.0. I don't know. But I think Samsung is really just trying to lock it to their devices. Uh, ever since this came out there's been rumors of Microsoft coming out with one. LG, I think, is going to focus more on like the Nike Fuel Band. I don't think they're going to get into the actual watch. Uh, there's been rumors of Apple working on one. And, and honestly, Apple already has one. You really think about it. When they did the little iPod Nanos with the screens and they actually made the watch bands, it's already made. All they have to do is do a little bit more engineering to it and maybe maybe make it a little bit bigger but it, it's already there it wouldn't take Apple a whole lot to do it and obviously when Apple does it it's going to be iDevice only and Microsoft if they was going to be smart about it if they would release a cross-platform watch, I really think that's what would really drive us home. And you would start seeing people adopting the idea. Right now, I think Sony and Pebble, from what I've seen, I'm not researched it a whole lot, but I think Sony and Pebble are the only ones that really have something that will work with pretty much most of what Android has to offer I don't think Microsoft has any applications in the in the Microsoft store to work with a smartwatch and Apple I'm not sure if it will work with a Pebble or not I'd have to should have did a little research before I did this video but uh, anyway that's my view so far was it a worthwhile bought investment? Uh, that's yet to be seen. It can be. Uh, there is another application I installed. I, I don't have this pulling down a whole lot. Right now it's really only pulling down like my Facebook messages. And I just added email. Uh, it runs my caller ID. And there's a neat little application that basically is a second viewfinder for your phone. And I wonder if it would work with uh, Bluetooth enabled camera. Like let's say if you had the Galaxy camera, it runs the Android Marketplace. You could per se, as long as it ran Bluetooth 4.0, you could use that. You could actually, because you can actually take the picture from the watch. So you could actually jump into the picture with people without having to set the timer and run. Now, I don't know if the Pebble does that, but I think that's interesting. And I'm sure the Galaxy D Gear does something like that. It'd be simple not to. I know they had a camera to it. They did everything but the kitchen sink. Why would you stop at the kitchen sink? But in hindsight, I think it's going to serve me well. Battery life so far has been amazing. This hasn't been on the charger since Sunday. And granted, it was turned off for one day, but I'm still sitting about half battery. And it hasn't been plugged in since Sunday. And right now it's Thursday. I, I It just seems like a win-win. So I think in closing, if you're on the fence with it and if you're trying to get into the whole smartwatch cheap uh, look at the Pebble, look at the Galaxy Gear, obviously if you get a Galaxy Gear you have to have a Samsung phone uh, but 
I would also say take a moment and look at what Sony has to offer. I have been pleasantly surprised. They're they are worth a, a second look if you're on the fence. Anyway, I'm going to close with this. Thanks for taking your time and watching. And I would like to welcome the new subscribers. Uh, thank you. Uh, really, really impressed since my whole interaction with some of the other uh, vloggers. I've really been getting subscriptions adding up. I've actually made it to 90. I remember about a year or so ago when I would still go back and look at my YouTube channel when I tried to start uploading again and I think I was sitting at like 70, 75. Uh, again, thank everyone. I really appreciate it. I look forward to making much better better videos. I look forward to getting better recording soft hardware, better editing software. Uh, it's going to be a process. I will come along as quick as I can. And I'm looking forward to the spring where I hope to uh, have everything squared away and uh, I didn't say it in other vlogs but the plans I do have for my channel this spring is once I get my uh, motorcycle endorsement I am going to try my hand at moto vlogging uh, the whole community really intrigues me and uh, it looks like a blast I mean anyway in danger of making this video too long I'm gonna stop it right now thank you